and welcome, Destiny Christian Church. So glad to be with you here today. And I'm going to talk to you today about, again, how we, how we view God. And <clears throat> when you view God in the wrong way, we tend to make the wrong judgments about God and about the world. But when we view God the right way, all of those things kind of, uh, they, they sort out, don't they? But there's a, there's a curious scripture in Job that I came across because I just got done uh, reading Job, and it's, it's a phenomenal book, and it's a book of, of uh, not understanding necessarily God's dealing with humanity. And I know that there are Christians that might say, well, that's pre-covenant, so, you know, that's or rather it's Old Testament, it's not New Testament, but yet the Word of God is the Word of God. I mean, uh, you show me anywhere in the world where, where suffering has not happened. And as someone has well said, unless, unless your theology can hold up at the gates of Auschwitz, you know, where, where six million Jews uh, died in different camps, um, uh, then the theology is worthless. And when you look at Job, there's a part of him that although he did everything right, and although he, he seemed to uh, really uh, uh, find, you know, his arguments to God of, of how righteous he was, so to speak, uh, there was something he was missing vital, something that he was just blind to. And the scripture is here. This is just before God rises up and just chews him out, okay? Um, Job 36, 26 says, Surely... God is great, and we do not know Him. Wow! <laughs> Think about that for a minute. There are parts of God, and if you've, if, if you've ever read A.W. Tozier on the attributes of God, he said that there are parts of God that are not even, you can't even describe them. That human language can't even penetrate or begin to, to discern the meaning of, of who He is and what He is. There, there are parts of God that are that are beautiful, and there are parts of God that are terrible. There are parts of God that are inviting, and there are parts of God that are repulsive. There are parts of God that are that are peaceful and joy joyful, but there are parts of God that are also very uncomfortable and offensive even. And you find Job experiencing a lot of that. And but what happened uh, when when Job was if you read the book of Job, he made all of these sweeping comments about God and how the world works. And because his view of God, even though he he was the upstanding poster child for a follower of God, he still missed it. And Job made sweeping judgments about God's character and how the overall world works. And this is what happens when we don't navigate our suffering in the right way, when we don't, when we don't uh, deal with it in, in the right way, and we can even sometimes deal with it in denial and say, "Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to accept this and all this." You know, there's a theology that talks about that, which I don't necessarily agree with all the time because um, uh, suffering is is part God uses the suffering to transform us. I mean, I, there's no other way, and it, it, in a perfect world. In heaven, you know, we won't have to deal with that. There'll be no process of pain to learn. But as the saying goes, time makes more commerce than reason. So, But Job made these sweeping judgments because even though he knew God is great, he didn't really know him. And even later on, in, I think in chapter 32, when God just chews him a new one, so to speak, um, Job finally says, I've heard you with my ears, but now my eye sees you. So what happens when we, when we know God is great but don't really know Him? We make wild speculations about the world and, and about things around us. And just look at the test recently we've been going through in our culture with the politics of what's happening in the world and, and, and the pain and, and all the craziness and how social media is wild with speculation. But yet, there's a part of us that has to look to God and say, Lord, we don't know everything, but you know everything. So we're going to trust in you because in the end, you're the one who really uh, makes it happen. You're the one who brings us to that place where, where, uh, where we can truly follow you and where we can truly, truly uh, have some kind of perspective, even though we may not understand everything. But if, if we have you, 
then then we have everything. That's the point. And so so be encouraged today that that you don't have to understand God totally. In fact, you can't. It's impossible because you're finite. He's infinite. We know only aspects of God, like seeing different facets of a diamond. And one facet of God, you know, and the best way to know him is to study his attributes, you know, the parts that make him, you know, his omnipotence, his, his omnipresence, and, and all of his names. That, that's, that's a starting point. But yet there, there's, a, there's a cloud of unknowing that happens when we pursue God because he's so vast and powerful and great and awesome that all we can do is bow down and reverence and say, yes, Lord, I will trust you. I don't have to get it. And that's the whole point. Sometimes uh, we want to create a theology that that keeps us in control of everything and says, you know, I have the victory over everything. And that's great. It, we're, we believe in Christus Victor, you know, the idea of Christ as Victor, that we he's called us to be overcomers. However, Paul, the greatest overcomer in the, in the New Testament, still went to prison. He still was stoned with rocks. He still was attacked by people and maligned and all these things. It doesn't mean you'll never go through the fire. It's how you navigate it. So I, I want to encourage you to not be afraid of, of the reality that you may not always understand or even like every aspect of God in your life. But nevertheless, He is with you, and all you have to know is that He loves you and He walks with you every day. So till next time, so good to be with you. God bless.